Bonjour à tous, welcome everybody. Nous sommes en direct différé aujourd'hui de l'école HEP, donc l'autre école pédagogique de Lausanne. We are on live in uh, high school uh, pedagogical from Lausanne in Switzerland, in Suisse. Um, et j'ai la joie aujourd'hui, I'm very happy to meet, to present you. Uh, je suis vraiment très très content de vous présenter aujourd'hui un développeur de jeux vidéo et pas n'importe quel jeu vidéo, c'est Pax Augusta Game. Can you uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Roger or Roger. Actually, my friends call me with the French version. I'm 40 years old, I'm from Zurich, Switzerland, and unfortunately don't speak any French. That does not matter. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry for your audience. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm actually not a developer. I'm uh, just an enthusiast. I loved history. I love Uh, I love, yeah, history and computer games and try connect that. So, tell me about your video game uh, project uh, based on the Roman world. It's a Roman city builder, so you play it on the computer. And the idea is you build a city. So you build bathhouses, apartment houses, streets, different kind of streets. And that's actually the game. So the idea is you manage your own city. You start with small strip houses, these uh, wooden houses, and then uh, you try to uh, bring more wealthy people into the city and they have more demands for better food or marble houses, marble houses for temples and so on. So the idea is to build a city, but uh, it's important. Many people think uh, there is war, you can fight battles and so on. That's not the case in that game. It's a game like same city. Yeah, exactly. Same yeah. City. A Roman same city. A Roman same city. And the idea is just to, to develop the city and you constantly have to rebuild the city because uh, in other Roman city builders, you had to play or build different forums. And in Pax Augusta, you just build one forum and that grows because The city needs more space for administration buildings, so you have to grow your forum. And that means you have constantly to destroy your city and rebuild it. So it's not that easy. And that's actually the game. You just build beautiful cities and it's just in the northwestern part of the Roman Empire. So it's not the whole empire. You can't build a city in Africa or Asia or so. It's just in uh, Gallia, Germania. Italia not. So how and where did you find all the sources? you needed to keep things believable? Mainly on the internet. Um, I started with basic research. I just watched YouTube videos, uh, the HBO series Rome, and I saw, okay, buildings look really dirty and old. So I thought everybody lives in a marble house. So I thought that's strange. And then I started to research and I was really lucky because I went on the social media and guys or people contacted me and say, hey, Roger, come to our archaeological park. I will show you something. And for example, pretty close to here, we are in Lausanne. Uh, there is a, a, a town called Orb. It's uh, about 20 minutes far from here. Uh, Silva contacted me and say, hey, uh, Roger, come here. I will show you the mosaics we have. So, okay, why not? I come to And he he explained me how that looked like and I got a completely different view about the buildings and the lifestyle and most of the stuff I got from the parks and people gifted me some books they just sent some books they, they sent, uh, wrote me a, a message on Instagram hey Roger can I have your address you are submitting to uh, on zoom with some archaeologists to do yeah. to uh, exchange your, your point of views in yeah your... so usually I post something on on the social media and they contact me can we talk about I say yeah for sure and they they explain me because they, they don't say don't do it they just say I wouldn't do it because of the reason and they explain me why it's my models are not realistic and I say okay it's nice that you explain it to me but send me some sources because I also have some wrong information people send me And as soon as I have some sources, I have some evidence, uh, I think, okay, that's true. I, I will do it. But you are a perfectionist. Yeah. Yeah. And you spend many, many time to have to make some details yeah. in your houses. Um, it's great. The, do your building get damaged over time? Do you have to rebuild them? You said that. Uh, have you drawn up an economy model um, for managing the Roman city? 
and what's your setup uh, after of, um, to, to build your city on computer? Okay, first, uh, the, the management system. Uh, this is something that I'm not so happy with it because basically it's a game and it's not a simulation. So in the beginning, I tried to make a simulation and then I figured out most of the people, they don't understand how that works. So basically it's a game. So you have to manage resources, you have to gather resources and you're constantly fighting against time, money or resources, constantly a fight to make your city more beautiful. So that's the management system. But this is not hyper-realistic. You get inspired by tied by uh, SimCity, by other free-to-play games, or you develop all these things in your brain? Yeah. And that's probably not the best way. <laughs> It's incredible. You're working alone yeah. on this. Explain us how it's possible to develop a game alone. I never would recommend to do that to somebody. Don't do it alone. It's the, uh, that it's an advantage. I can. I have an idea. I do it. I don't have to ask anybody. But the problem is, it's way too much work. Just for you to understand how a game works, uh, you have to write computer code. You can learn that. So it's not so difficult. Which are yours? Uh, it's time. Many many times. Yeah. It's trial and error. You have to create 3D object. You have to learn that. You have, you need. 2D graphics for the user interface, you need music, then you need a storyline, uh, and you need many more things you never thought about. You need community management, you have to post on social media. It's a lot of stuff, and the problem is you can't be great on all these topics. You, usually you are great on one specific topic, and that's the problem. I can't produce music, so I have to hire somebody, please produce me music. And I have to hire some people, they create some icons and so on. You develop on a platform, on Blender, yeah. on Unity. Could you explain us what this is and what your setup consists? Mm -hmm. Okay, basically, um, you, you have the engine, this is Unity. There are different other engines, uh, but I worked with Unity. and. Unity itself is just a program that connects everything. So I work with Blender. It's a 3D free program, blender.org. I can recommend it. And Blender is pretty cool. You can do animation, video, and so on. But it's a really slow learning curve. So in the beginning, you suffer because all, you know that. Yeah. All the shortcuts and things. And it's, yeah. But as soon as you're in, it's, I love this tool. You can, you're completely free. There is no, no, no borders. You just can do whatever you want as soon as you understand the program. In the beginning, I would say I had for just an apartment house, it took me about 20 to 30 hours for one apartment house. And now I would say two or three hours because I, I know my workflow. I know how to improve that. Mm, the game is in development. It's a little bit more than five years since I started. Um, and I don't do it as a full-time job. I have a regular mm -hmm. job. Tell me about your uh, setup computing. There is many screens. One uh, computer is powerful. Yeah, my computer is actually not that powerful <laughs> because in, in the beginning it was, but five years later it's kind of an mm. average computer. I have uh, four or five screens. I have four screens. And this is really important because on one screen, I see the game. On the other screen, I see the code. On one screen, I see uh, how the game looks behind the scene. This is really important. And on the screen on the top, I have some um, performance measurements. So I see if you turn the camera, oh, the, I have a performance spike. Why? So I have a lot of, of stuff going on on the screen on the top. And I do it in my basement. So it's completely quiet there. I can focus. There is a window, but I close it usually with the curtains. I have to focus on that. And you have the purpose to develop this game for uh, PCs on Macintosh and Linux, perhaps, for everybody, not very with a high power configuration. The problem, this is maybe interesting for people they don't know how a computer game works. Um, every computer genre has its problems. A uh, first-person shooter has to be pretty fast. And the city builder is actually a really slow game. Nothing happened, just a little bit smoke and fire. But the problem is, 
um, you have to imagine your, your computer, your CPU calculates everything and then it sends to the graphic card to show it on the screen. And the problem on a city builder is you have thousands of objects. You have yeah. hundreds of houses. So the problem is the bottleneck is between your CPU and the graphic card to go through. And this is a big problem. So I have constantly to optimize mm -hmm. what you see as a player. And people say, oh, I want to adjust the camera angle I see I want to see the whole city the problem is when you look from the top view on a city you just see let's say 100 houses that's okay for an average computer but if you move your camera angle down you see thousands of houses and that's the problem and people don't understand they say I want to move the camera I say yeah but then you need a fast computer so uh, the idea is you need 16 gigabytes of RAM I don't know if that's much or not uh, there is a, it's okay. There is a tester. Uh, he works on an eight gigabyte laptop, and he really suffers. It's not that you don't need a, an amazing computer. You just need this RAM because you have to put a lot of buildings. Yeah, and it will be on Windows definitely. Uh, I try to bring it on Mac because obviously a lot of people use Mac. <laughs> It's not a promise, I try it. And Linux, uh, it's just because I think that's cool. You have a full-time job. Um, how do you manage to combine, uh, to combine two activities? Uh, yeah, that's pretty stressful. Uh, you need a pretty tight day, pretty planned day. I get up at four o'clock in the morning every day, usually not on the weekends. Uh, I still study. Uh, I still study microeconomy until six o'clock. Then I go to the office, I do my full-time job, and at the evening, usually at five or six o'clock, I go home and work until eight o'clock, no minutes longer, yeah. on the game. And then I have one hour for dinner and to come down, enjoy the day. And on the weekends, I usually get up at six uh, because I used to get up early. And the game um, is going to its end, I think. Uh, it will be available on Steam at what time? So the demo will be out in June on the Steam Next Fest, hopefully. And uh, the release will be end of this year, end of 24. And how do you explain this project, explain this game? Um, people say, oh, yes, um, house, uh, Roman house, what's, what's kind, kind of game? Could you explain? Yeah, it's a city builder, so the idea is just to build a beautiful city and you see how the people live, where they walk, how they enjoy the city, what they do. That's actually, you just build cities. So it's an easy game, it takes time, enjoyable, no stress. I went to a lot of uh, uh, museums, I bought a lot of books just to do research and you see tons of details you never imagined. There are, I can I can count it. So, for example, you see... Uh, a Roman travel card in the game. And this is kind of a, a real copy of the one from Xanten in Germany. Or right now I work on the Basilica from Lausanne here. But I usually I take to your original floor plans. So the idea is people can play the game and they can go outside and see the, the buildings from the game because I took the real measurements. Usually we don't know everything exactly, but uh, I try to go with the stuff that archaeologists mm -hmm. deliver to me. And for example, the Basilica here in uh, Lausanne, it's a beautiful building, but for the game it's a little bit too long. It looks strange. So I took the original floor plan, but I shortened it a little bit. It's just this two-thirds. It's, it's real. It's, it's nothing wrong. It's just shorter. How did your interest uh, to ancient Rome and antique period uh, Ah, it was actually my teacher when I was around age 12 or so. Uh, he brought, we had history in class and he brought me to Augusta Rorica in Switzerland. It's in Basel. And for the first time I saw this huge theater and I thought, wow, that's not possible. People build it by hand. And I got the fascination. At the same time I played Caesar 2, it's a computer game. And it, I, it, it was luck. I, I played in my free time and I saw it in real. I thought, wow. So I, I really came into history through my teacher and I'm so thankful for him. Uh, and uh, I lost the connection a little bit to 
to Roman history when I was 18, because mm -hmm. then you have different things to do. You want to meet girls or going out. Mm -hmm. I lost a little bit that. And uh, then I passed by 10 or 15 years later on Augusta Rorica. And I remember I was there as a kid. I turned my car, I went there and I saw, wow, I felt, I just felt how I was a child. Everything was back and so oh, I missed the history. So I, I, I bought books and got more into it. It, that's, it was just my teacher. You like playing uh, on computer when you were a child? A little bit. I was not a big computer gamer, but I would say as a regular child. Not addicted like people probably today or so. I just played it a little bit and most of the time I spent outside. I love to be in the nature. Okay. This is really important to me. What's your plan for the few next well, years? Okay, basically finish the game. Mm -hmm. uh, read all the feedbacks. Yeah. People are mad or not happy or happy, I don't know. And uh, then I want to improve it. I want to fix the box. It will have box, definitely. Um, and then I want to bring more content. So I have already a lot of ideas, uh, but I, I can't implement them right now because I want to finish the game as it is. And then I bring more content like oil production or more import export stuff, more ships. I have tons of ideas. Uh, the sweet. Max Augusta, yeah. too, of course. Gladi Gladiator 2, the film, is coming mm -hmm. out. Uh, it is great. Your game will uh, come out. It's a good match. It will be a good match, I think. I hope so, yeah. So um, I think the regular people, the non-historians, they are more connected uh, to the Roman history. So they... Uh, yeah, they, they, they saw the movie 20 years ago, probably Gladiator 1, and uh, probably they go back, yeah. they remember, and they get more in touch with history. I know you, some people on YouTube will destroy the movie because it's not accurate, but uh, I always asking me, okay, it's not 100% accurate. So, but we get a lot of people into history Um, so it's always a balance. And this is also Pax Augusta. I can't be 100% accurate because then regular people won't play the game. It's too complex. For example, I have, I have a fast food building in the game. Yeah. I call it Popina. 99% of the people say, what's that? So I have to change it to Taberna or the Taberna because it's a more common term. And... Now the question is, should I call it Popina and nobody understand what it is? Or should I call it Taverna or Tarberna? It's not 100% accurate to that particular building, but people get into that. So it's, it, I can't make everybody happy. And Gladiator 2, probably not. Why did you choose Pax Augusta for your name of game? Uh, that's actually an easy question. I actually want to name it Pax Romana. Uh, because that term it's common to more people, but there is already a game called Pax Romana, so I thought Pax Augusta, that's it. What do you like precisely when you're working on your game? I like to have the different tasks. So some days I'm in the mood to make 3D models, and some days I'm in the mood for coding, and so I like to switch it. That's what, me, what makes me happy. Right now I'm in the end of the development process, so Now I can't choose. I have to do this or that. So at the moment I'm still motivated, but it was much more fun before. And social networks, do you like then before Pax Augusta? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And now uh, you must communicate yeah. on your game uh, and you must create a uh, community. Uh, yeah. Explain me, uh, uh, you're working now with social networks. Mm -hmm. With your community, uh, this was a long was a long journey. In the beginning, as I said, a friend told me publish your stuff on the internet. I said no, I don't want. I'm not. I'm 40. I'm not this generation. I'm not old, but I used to have a, a phone with this uh, wheel. So okay, <laughs> and uh, I published it. And I, I always was afraid about aggressive people. People they put some hate, and I don't need that. Yeah. So if people don't like it, okay, you don't like it, but why do you comment it okay 
And then I started and I, I got a lot of cool feedback. And I thought, wow, people are nice on the internet. And uh, it grows really slowly. But I think if somebody sends me a message, he deserves a feedback. And I try to answer all the comments, even if it's just a smile or something like that, because people take time to send me a comment. And I, it's my obligation to give a feedback back. And that takes a lot, of, a lot of time. And in the beginning, I made a mistake because uh, I'm an economy guy. I studied that. So I did a clear marketing concept. I did a clear audience. I, I defined everything. So the audience is 30 to 40 years, years age, male, and from Central Europe. That's the audience. Because this is really interesting. German people are people they play city builders city builders are around the world but the core audience is germans i don't know why but it's some it's a german thing uh you know the famous game i know it's also from germany and i thought okay these people are usually on facebook it's the older for the older people and i'm not successful on facebook i don't know why and uh, a, a colleague helped me. He, she put it, everything on Facebook for me because I don't understand Facebook. I still don't understand it. But then I, this is interesting. Instagram was just kind of the, the trash because she put it on Facebook for me yeah. and I reposted it on Instagram. And the audience on Instagram skyrocketed and Facebook is still pretty low. And two months ago, I never want to do that. I went on TikTok. I thought, gaming, TikTok, but I said, come on, it's just reusable content. I put it, my reels on Instagram, and I put it also on TikTok. I don't, I don't lose anything. And TikTok is strange because sometimes, or the most of the time, you are really low, but sometimes it pushes a video, and then you almost can't handle the feedback. I had a 50,000 view uh, video. It, it, I can't tell you the number, but my wish list got skyrocket just with that video so it's an interesting social media but when this project is done i want to go step out a little bit There's so much time yeah and you know that i i know that what do you think about uh, artificial intelligence for gaming and for you it will change everything uh for example um i can give you two example uh i can write much faster code with ChatGPT. Because sometimes I have a question, I know how it works, um, but I'm not 100% sure. So I should read on, on tutorials, on forums. I just write it, how can I do that? And it sent me the code. But I don't think it's able to write a whole game right now. So I see the code that ChatGPT offers to me. I say, okay, I got it, what do you mean? But that doesn't work. I have to change it. And that I'm, I'm much faster. The problem I see in the beginning, I hired people, they created 2D uh, icons for the buttons. So beautiful house. I don't need them anymore. I know it's hard. I paid a lot of money for artists. They created these beautiful icons, but I got exactly the same or even better results by AI. And right now, Pax Augusta is a mix. I would say 98% it's made by human. And just a small piece, because uh, if I need an icon, let's say for a beautiful coin, it costs me about 200 euros when I hired an artist. And right now I spend so much money, I can't afford any more external staff. So just to finish the game, oh, I'm missing this icon or here's something, I do it with AI, but not the whole project. And translation, it's AI, but I pre-translate it by AI, and then, yeah, so I still need people. And uh, I think I'm from, I'm an economy guy, so we know this hyper -compet or hype cycle. Hype cycle is a pretty cool thing for everybody to understand how things work. In the beginning, you have a hype. So we are on the AI hype, and now it, it goes down because we realize, oh, it's cool, but it doesn't work as we think. So it will go down. And then after a couple of years, maybe two, three years or more, we don't know, it, it will be in our life. So it comes back. So in a couple of months or years, we go in a, in a tail, yeah, in a valley. So we realize, oh, it's not a, 
it's a game changer, but not that what we expect. So, uh, yeah, it's difficult, but I'm, I'm not a big fan if we destroy jobs. Definitely not. But the technology is here and it will be used. So we have to understand how we can cope with that. So, but Pexagos, I would say 98, 99% is made by humans. But honestly, I can't afford any more external help. Yeah. Give you an example. Uh, look, I have a Swiss salary. Mm -hmm. It's definitely higher than an average salary in Europe. Prices here, you know that, are much higher. So I'm not rich or so, but uh, I spent around 60,000 euros for the game already. This is my private money. For sure, it's 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 like a, an average salary per year for a Swiss inhabitant resident. So, if you're from Spain or from France, think about you spend a whole salary for a year for a project you don't know if it works, and I can't spend more money. So, I just want to finish it, and that's why I use AI just to finish yeah. some parts. Have you an anecdote? Anecdote uh, from your project. A lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, true, true the one. <laughs> uh, okay, in the beginning, that was a cool story. Uh, I created houses. And uh, usually when you are... Uh, this is interesting because most of the people never thought about that. Uh, when you're at home in winter, you usually have cold. So what you do, you turn on your heater. So the Romans should do that too because they have this hippocaustum. So most of the people don't realize... Most of the Romans didn't have this floor heating. This mm -hmm. was expensive. And it used a lot of wood. So I think, okay, they have probably a chimney or something like that. I made a chimney on every roof. And then an archaeologist contacted me and said, mm. uh, chimneys, the Romans, they had chimneys on the roof, but not as you think. I will show you. Then he invited me to the archaeological park he, in Xan. He showed me that. And they realized, oh, that's wrong. I have to delete all the chimneys. Okay, what kind of chimney is that of, for for the for house? Uh, for the house, actually, I never saw a chimney for the house. I just for the bathhouse, and they are really small, like a mushroom, like this. And in Augusta Rorica, there is one on top of the the kitchen. And in Xanten, it's on the bathhouse, but they are really small. You actually don't see them. Uh, But what I, but most of the people don't realize the Romans, the regular Romans like you and me, mm -hmm. they were not at home. They just slept there. And what should you do inside of a house? Because there is no TV, no internet. Yes, but the wife, the wives uh, educate the children. Yeah. So uh, they are spending some time in house, uh, slaves. Too, but they are working so hot. They say half hot. No, no. But uh, master on on sons, uh, effectively going outside. Yeah. So I think I'm I'm not correct. Probably I'm not a historian, so. But I imagine people live more outside than we do nowadays. So, um, so the interior, the furniture is probably different than. We, Because sometimes I, I lay down on my sofa at home on my couch. I watch TV. That was not. Yeah, it was different. So I think people lived more outside. Uh, it's difficult for us to to translate. Yeah. Uh, modus vivendi in antiquity uh, in ancient mode. Yeah. Thank you. Just one. Thing. Yes. <laughs> yes. Of course. <laughs> one story. Uh, I, I want to bring in uh, an an oven in the game. And I researched how an oven looks uh, for melting iron. And I found something. It looks really strange, like dirt, a chimney or something like that. I thought the rooms were so elaborated. I never used that. So I did some research. I found something on Google. I saw, oh, that's a cool oven. I copied it. I posted it on Instagram. And people contacted me. Wow, Roger, are you sure? Why not? I saw that. I took, I saw the picture. Yeah, that's a pizza oven. What? So a guy brought... Uh, labeled a pizza oven as a Roman, an ancient Roman oven. And I was wrong. I copied it. And this is important. When I, I, I want to bring copies of real buildings into the game so people don't educated, don't get educated with wrong knowledge. So I have, 
I, it's not a big game. It's not a big project. We are a small niche, but I don't want to spread false news or false knowledge. That's why I try to copy buildings as close as possible. So I don't spread this wrong knowledge because I grew up with Asterix and Obelix and I have a completely wrong view about the Romans. But ask some random people about chain chain armor. They say, that's look, that doesn't look Roman. So because we have this um, Lorica Segmentata, and when I saw the chain, the Lorica Hamata, I think so, I thought, that looks barbarian. And I have to change my mind. And I want to spread this new knowledge I have with the regular people. It is very interesting. Yeah. And satisfying here. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Thank you very much. Thank you. For this Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup.